laid back and kicking it. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Rob. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Football Friday, John Frenzy on fire today. Uh, I'm just going to read the uh, Wikipedia bio of the next guy, our next guest, and I'll tell you what, you're a big deal when you got your own Wikipedia page. David Benefield from Los Angeles, California, played at Cal State Northridge, into the CFL with the Ottawa Rough Riders, 92 to 94, 95 with the BC Lions, with the San Francisco 49ers in 96, back to BC from 97 to 01, and then 02, 03 with the Blue Bombers, and then with the beloved Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Canada's team. 0405 CFL All Star on how many occasions here? A lot. Twice in the East, twice in the West. One All Canadian, and a Great Cup champion, of course, joins us on video chat today. Mr. Furious from the West Coast. How are you, Dave? Rod, how you doing? Good, 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 good. I know you've been watching the last little bit here with our good friend, Hall of Fame writer, broadcaster, John Frenzy. Do you have a take on anything that he might have said or I might have said of the state of affairs in the Canadian Football League? I mean, it's really tough because, hold on, it's really tough because, I mean, Rod, I, I think the commissioner can only do so much. And he's waiting to hear from the government officials and everything. So we, it's a huge logjam, and I feel for the players. But right now, it's, I wish we could have game plan better. Do you think the players should be getting their direction from the commissioner or from the president and executive director of the Players Association? I'm starting to wonder. With terms of how they should be conducting themselves right now, getting jobs or not, I think that should be coming from the Players Association heads myself. Well, I, uh, it's tough to say because if they're not working hand-to-hand, like the NFL, those guys are working hand-to-hand. NCAA, they're working hand-to-hand. You know, and it's funny, like the ACA told Boston University that we're going to go, but if you don't want to go, hey, that's okay. So I think the CFL has got to get better with their communication and, and whatever happened in the past between negotiations between players and, and ownership, we kind of have to let that go right now and deal with what's going on right now. David John Lynch, you're good to see you again. Uh, hey, good to see you, John. I, I think you're the type of guy we need right here. Where you need, and you know who you are. We need a guy to go out and make it happen. I mean, it's a critical situation, a distinct possibility that we're not going to have football in Canada this year. And so many of us, like me, and a lot of, I guess you, most of your life, fall in, in Canada is football time. The thought of not having it is just unbelievable. And I just don't think the guys at the top, I guess I'm going to say that, are special. Push that button strong enough. Am I right? I don't think we've, we've let the government understand and, and made the point clear that the CFL is in a position where it can take a year off. And if we do take a year off, I worry that we won't have the right people, the right motors, engines to really push this thing. The last time I saw the CFL exciting and with the right hype was Rocket Ishmael. Really? I mean, what ma- you, what makes you, what yeah, ma- think about it. That was yeah. the last time you saw the hype, the excitement, the crowds. A lot of truth I mean, in that. We gotta get back to that sort of A lot energy. of truth in that. Well, is the right guy leading them? <laughs> Do you think it's the right guy leading this league? I might as well ask you that question directly. Is 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 Ambrosi the right guy? Yeah, yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah, I I hope he's the guy. I mean, he's been in private industry. He's been doing it. He understands marketing. But put it like this: the last guy we had that was really the guy was Bobby Ackles. He's yeah. the only guy, the only that 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 seemed to get it. And we're in a tough market here in BC. So for him to make it happen and exciting again, make the Lions exciting again, that's what the sort of guy we need nationally. You know, Dave, you know, you've worked in the media a long time. You've coached out there in football. What I hear from my friends in Vancouver is that if the Lions were a consistent winner, 
they'd be filling BC Place or back to the good old days. That it's a fickle sports market. They know the Lions are there, but they're not going to come unless there's a big name and they're winning. Is that that's from media types and football types? Do you agree? The media kind of the media has robbed us. Uh, they've said that these guys that we have that we've had aren't big enough stars. They're not great enough. So therefore, the fans treat it like a minor league baseball. And until you get guys, media who buy in, fill in a backstory, create hype, tell the great stories, and we hit them, and we hit all of our fans, the young ones especially, with the right hype that they see south of the border. Until we do that, we're still uh, lagging. Well, we got a great Hang on, John, John one, sec, one sec. I want to say something to Dave, though. Here's the funny thing, Dave, about our show and our platform that we're using on Facebook Live is our demographic, frankly, is a lot of young men, teens and 20s. That's why I had to read your Wikipedia page, man. I had Warren Moon on the other day, and people are like, who is this guy? <laughs> Chris Pronger yesterday, people are writing in saying, ask him who his favorite line mate is. I'm like, he was a defenseman. So I'm I'm happy that we're getting the young guys here, but that's how this how's the CFL going to do it? Well, we picked and we've decided to vet and over vet, and we want always want the perfect guy. But look at the NBA; they're letting their guys get out there. You know, they're not trying to find the perfect prompt and and prepped guy. No, no, no. They're letting their guys get out there. I mean, they do a fashion spread of every game of their guys arriving at the stadium. That builds hype. That builds interest. We don't seem to get that still. No, you're right. They're letting the so, players. They're letting the players be themselves down there. Whereas here, they don't show that. Well, we want to don't control, you agree? Uh, we want to control everything. Mike yeah. Riley's one of the and best then, quarterbacks. And our, our John, just he's, keep going, Dave. Keep going. Our demographic is is aging and we're afraid to adopt new whether it's whether it's the new marketing or we're letting the kids come in we want to forever keep throwing it back back and the comment you made about uh warren moon i was listening to a u.s station and they're talking listening i'm sorry i'm getting a lot of feedback on my end oh what but can he Larry do about Bird, that uh, Larry Bird is, if he got as much internet play as like Dirk Nowitzki, I mean, the young kids would know who he is. I mean, I think that Jordan Last Dance really filled in a lot of these new kids to understand how great the man was and how powerful he was to the culture of basketball. We all agree the CFL product's fantastic, right? That doesn't really need to be tweaked, but you think marketing is, is a huge part. Can you just pick up where you left off on that? You know, Rod, you guys are the only ones. The riders are the only one with the stadium. When they put that stadium together, the, the, you know, the uniform selection of the guys, I mean, it's beautiful. They pushed everyone forward, right? Now, what we need, and what we need from the league, we need to know who the hell all these guys are. We need to talk about these guys. This is the first, this first group. Um, actually, going back to uh, this, actually the last five years, these players had been all over the internet. We can look at anything on these guys. We can look at them at the NFL Combine, if they're at the NFL Combine. And we don't figure out, we don't have enough bright people or savvy people to figure out how to market these guys. I mean, that's the problem, and that's what we're facing because, I mean, look at, look at, we're going to lose youth sport this year. And we've got all these players sitting around going, what are we going to do for a year? That, that's huge. And we can't, and I don't think it'll help the CFL as much as it hurts me. I don't think it'll help us to see guys playing in empty stadiums. Even though, I mean, the NFL may be doing it, right? But they're, 
they've got a lot going on behind in the back room. They're a nine billion dollar industry, so they can <laughs> afford to play in empty stadiums because they've created enough hype around Aaron Rodgers, OBJ. I mean, you name the guy, they've got hype. A hype guy in, on every team. They've got a guy that makes fans go, I don't care about the Bengals, but, you know, I'm going to watch this year, you know. I mean, they've got that in every place. So we need to develop and we need to stop being so picky and so uh, so sometimes regional about uh, talking about who we got. Why, are we, why do I want to watch Bo Levi Mitchell? You know, tell me why. I don't really care about the champ, but I care about Bo Levi Mitchell. He's, he's <laughs> I know. Well, and you also said uh, about the, them trying to control everything. Maybe that's a Canadian thing, but you couldn't be more correct on that. And we, you know, with this video game that we've been running simulations of, it's pretty good. It's not Madden, but it's pretty good. NBA 2K, which the NBA is behind, the video game series, uh, they're all behind that. It's it's Our CFL game is no worse than that, and I think the CFL is slowly coming on board with that. But you, it's it's the it's the control issue, like you said. You brushed on Canada West, David. i, I got to go back on that for a second. I don't know if you're still on UBC's staff, but I know you have been. What's your take on Canada West scrapping fall sports? Because that's another thing that it's blowing up my phone over the last week. The Canada, I mean, you know, I know a lot of the kids that are still there. I see a bunch of them around. I know the coaches and everything. And what we need right now, I, I think if we don't play this year, and I've talked to guys who lost programs in the U.S., when you lose a program, you lose a lot of money. And you, and you lose – and you lose a lot of money, you lose a lot of spirit that goes along with all those fans that show up to these games. The tradition, it dies. And it's hard to bring it back once you let it, once you let it fall. And so we really, I mean, if, if the universities can't play, okay, so be it. But coming back in the new year, we're going to need to know why am I watching, you know, the Regina Ram? Who, you know, Coach Bryce, tell me, why these guys are amazing and they and we should be flooded with why every why the top three guys on the on the on the ramps are that way why do i have to come to a game you know ubc's got to do the same thing there's 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 no profile i mean it, at universities if you're a university player you're the top dog everyone should know who you are when you walk into a room everyone should see you on campus should know who you are we don't want to do that. It's like we're afraid. We don't even want kids to have fun. I go to university games, and it's not a university team. It's an older demographic than the CFL demographic. That's we're not just, even bringing the university students to the game. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a similar thing with the Rams, and uh, you're right. I actually had one coach, Canada West coach, I won't tell you the sport or our viewers the sport, but he said uh, there's no effort to get on television and there's no effort to market our players whatsoever. He said the finances of and of the U sports are upside down compared to America, where the sports fund the universities <laughs> rather than the universities funding the, funding the sports is what goes on in Canada. But, you know, David, I also think from, like, I follow very closely what you do. I don't always comment on it, but I follow what you do. It seems like you've known Chase Claypool since he was a young boy, or at the very least, you certainly have known him the past several years. Talk about his profile in Vancouver, if you don't mind, the, uh, the Notre Dame star who went in the second round of the NFL draft to the Steelers. Now, now, see, this is Chase Claypool. I heard about him early on, and, uh, you know, an acquaintance friend of mine, Eddie Ferg, was the guy who kind of pushed him into these camps in the U.S. to get exposed at a late period. I mean, it's unbelievable how late he got his opportunity to get exposed. But when you look like a grown man going into your senior year, and you're lining up next to the five-star kids, and you're making them look like kids, yeah, you're going to get a chance, and now you can stay put and play in Canada at your high school because you've already done the work of, you know, competing with the five-stars at all those camps that you got to go to to get the exposure. And then we, we just kind of fell off in the media here 
in BC and in Canada because this guy was a 3.5 GPA coming out of high school, uh, great athlete, great personality. He's a guy that we should have followed from day one. I mean, he's, we should have been the bandwagon following him every step of the way. You don't become the MVP of Notre Dame, the Notre Dame, without being a stud, a monster amongst men. I mean, you don't do that. You don't come out of Abbey Collegiate, which isn't even in the top level in D.C., and be the guy that is killing five stars across the country in the NCAA. I mean, think about it. So we missed that one. You know, we, we have uh, Cuba, how, uh, Cuba in, at o- Oklahoma State. We need to be following him this year because if the league, if, if everything goes right, he may, he may win a Heisman. He may win a Heisman. So we've got all these kids that we're afraid to follow. We don't want to follow because we're taking a light away at U-Sport. Well, U-Sport's never on TV. Why is it I can watch Carolina, but I can't watch uh, U of F versus uh, the Thunderbirds on TV? I mean, that's, that's a crime. I mean, and you talk about, like, like a guy like David Dupe. Here's a guy who puts his heart, he puts his wallet, he puts his time. The man's out there putting up stands, doing all these menial tasks. He's got a couple bucks, I think. <laughs> You know, and I remember one time asking him, so I said, Dave, he's got quite a bit of money. And I was like, okay, well, let me ask. Talk. I, I, I said to him, I said, why do you do this? He said, well, yeah, I can buy a Ferrari every year, but what does that do? You know what I mean? It's like, and, and probably, and I, I thought that was so just amazing that a guy like that, he's out there moving posters, moving stamps, carrying a hammer. I mean, this is a guy who's not just signing checks and going, you do this, he's doing it. That's the sort of guys we need involved. And finally, on the youth sport, if we could open University of Okanagan, if we could get a football team there, I think that would be that would solve a lot of the problems, and that would create a better uh, Canada West for sure. No, no doubt, no. and maybe that's all part of the reset. And by the way, for those that don't know, David Dubé could buy the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at least eight times over. You know, so, and this is a guy that's out of Saskatoon. David, I appreciate the chat. I actually have about five or six more questions for you, but we're out of time. Can we do it again in a week or so? Uh, of course, and, and you know, I won't kill. Is it Clark, your uh, ice guy? Or is he your producer? Say that, Say that again. again. He was talking in my ear. Say that again, David. Who's your producer? It's, it's Clark. Okay. Um, I won't kill Clark next time I see him about having me out there with the double speak and everything. He, he said, says that uh, he's got the audio figured out, David. So I'll let you two talk back and forth. How's that? If I were a pinball, it would be he would have been perfect right off the top. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, hey, I agree. I agree. Mr. Furious, have a great weekend. I appreciate the time. Hey, you guys get easy and remember, ProLine Construction Materials, we're all over. Thank Pro you. Line <laughs> construction materials. There you go. There's the shout out for David Benefield, which I'm not joking. I actually had several things that I wanted to get to with Dave, but we ran out of time because he had so much good stuff on Canada West and the CFL. Uh, we are going to break. Dee, 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 dee. Friends, he's, looks like he's sticking with us for a while. Yeah. Coming up, Matthew Shinitti and Anwar Stewart. It's the RP Show, Facebook Live, Listen Live, and at rodpeterson.com. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.